Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. My name is Patty Marsden. I'm the pastor here at New Market Community Church. And I'm Dave Talmadge. I'm the music director here. And I'm Elaine Pratt. I'm the worship coordinator here. And we're here this morning together to just come and wish you a Merry Christmas and celebrate a few moments with you today on Christmas morning. We hope that you enjoy the moments that we have planned for you with some music, some prayers, and a beautiful message from Elaine. Merry Christmas. As we begin our worship time this morning, let's gather our hearts together in prayer. Gracious God, we come to adore you in the newborn baby, a tiny spark. Oh, we come with hopeful heart and eyes of wonder and awe. The gentleness of your gaze draws us into the mystery of all that lies beyond. And in that sacred space, we yield all that we are to you. And we pray for those who are broken, for those who seek, for the bellies rumbling with hunger, for the war-torn spirits and the ragged lives, for those who cling to the last best thing, for those whose hearts pine for love. Open our hearts, merciful God, to the spark of your presence still in this world. Open our eyes that we might behold your presence in the least likely of places and among the least likely of people. Emmanuel, God with us, kindle your spark within us that together we may shine forth your light and banish the shadows of this world. Bless us, O Lord, and turn our faces ever toward you for peace, for mercy, for the sake of all that is holy. We come to adore you, O Christ. Amen. entitled Welcome the Light. The deeper the darkness, the brighter the light shines. For love refuses to be extinguished by despair. Resilience and hope cannot be quenched while the love light burns steadily, fueled by courage and by compassion. Look for the light. And there, right there, you will find love. I offer this Christmas prayer for you. When all of time is crushed into a few moments on the edge of everything, teetering on the brink of a new belief in the future, here is where we meet you, O oh God. 
in the last moments of darkness, before the breaking in of a light and the cry of a woman and the birth of love, here is where we meet you, O God. As silence deepens and the wonder stretches and the ancient past becomes our longed-for future and the word of the prophet slips into fulfillment, here is where we meet you, O God. Creating God, hold this moment made of every time and may we breathe along with all those who have been here before to the heartbeat of hope, and know that this moment so full of expectation is as sacred as they get. For contained here is all the hope of the future and the fulfilling of ancient longing. In the snarl of silence, as the universe bends with the weight of anticipation, where the worry is greatest and the moment most urgent, here is where we meet you, O oh God in flesh. Amen. Let's hear the prophecy as written in Isaiah chapter 9 and chapter 52. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch dark land, light has dawned. You have made the nation great. You have increased its joy. They rejoiced before you as with joy at the harvest, as those who divide plunder rejoice. As on the day of Midian, you shattered the yoke that burdened them, the staff on their shoulders and the rod of their oppressors. Because every boot of the thundering warriors and every garment rolled in blood will be burned, fuel for the fire. A child is born to us. A son is given to us. And authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of heavenly forces will do this. How beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of a messenger who proclaims peace, who brings good news, who proclaims salvation. Who says to Zion, your God rules? Listen, your lookouts lift their voice. They sing out together right before their eyes. They see the Lord returning to Zion. Break into song together, you ruins of Jerusalem. The Lord has comforted his people and has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in view of all the nations. All the ends of the earth have seen God's victory. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us hear from the Gospel of John, a selection specifically chosen for Christmas Day. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light. But the world didn't recognize the light. 
The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace, full of truth. Praise be to God. child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping this this is Christ the King whom shepherds guard and angels sing Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean a state where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christians fear for sinners here. The silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of man. Bring him incense, gold, and myrrh Come, peasant king, to own him The king of kings salvation brings Let loving hearts enthrone him This, this is Christ the king whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Merry Christmas, New Market. Today I'm going to talk to you about the best Christmas present you'll ever get. But before I start, I first want to read the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. Now I know you've all heard this before, but this time try to listen as if you're hearing it for the very first time. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I bring you good tidings of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will see the child wrapped in bands and cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing has, that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. 
But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Amen. Have you ever found the absolutely most perfect Christmas gift ever? This doesn't happen every year. We can find nice gifts, requested gifts, wanted gifts, good gifts. But only rarely do we find that absolutely perfect gift for someone. One that will never be forgotten. What makes a gift an absolutely most perfect gift? Here are some characteristics. It has to be something a person can really use. So, like, not fruitcake. It has to be something that a person can definitely relate to. So, in most cases, not a textbook on astrophysics. The best gifts come from the heart. How many of you mothers and grandmothers out there still have that macaroni necklace that your now adult child made for you many years ago? I don't know if you can see this from the camera, but I'm actually wearing a matched set of a necklace and a bracelet um, made by my two children many, many years ago. And the best gifts last a long time, whether it's something physical or a memory. By now, you might have put together that uh, my theme is going to be that Jesus Christ is the best Christmas gift that you'll ever get. Let's think about the gift of Jesus based on those characteristics I just talked about. The gift of Jesus Christ and his salvation is definitely something, a gift that everyone can use. Jesus Christ is someone everyone can relate to. God ensured that by sending Jesus as a human being, a baby. Even crusty curmudgeons smile in the presence of a baby. And God also sent God's angel to tell the shepherds, do not be afraid for I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. Jesus came in a form that was accessible to all of us. Jesus Christ is a gift from God's heart. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not die, but will have eternal life. Which brings us to the last characteristic, Salvation through Jesus Christ is the absolutely best gift that literally never ends. We can all agree that Jesus is God's gift to us, but what all has God given to us via Jesus? Here in Jesus' own words. One, Jesus is sustenance. He said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Two, Jesus is the beacon to follow. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have light within them. Three, Jesus is the path to God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God except through me. Four, Jesus is is rest. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Five, Jesus is our foundation. I am the vine, you are the branches. Six, Jesus is our source of joy. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Seven, Jesus is peace. Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Eight, Jesus is the shepherd for all people. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. And nine, most importantly, 
Jesus gives us eternal life. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they will die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And this gift is for everyone. Sometimes when I'm in Boston or New York City, I look around at all the crowds of diverse people, and I think about how God loves each one of them, knows each one, cares about each one. Multiply that by all the people on earth, past, present, and future. Jesus Christ came to save each and every one. In that vast context, the gift of Jesus Christ to a single individual becomes amazing, awesome, miraculous. There is a song that captures this idea beautifully. It's called, Who Am I? by Casting Crowns. Listen to it on YouTube if you get a chance. Here are the words. Who am I that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, would care to feel my hurt? Who am I that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever-wandering heart? Who am I that the eyes who see my sin would look on me with love and watch me rise again? Who am I that the voice who calmed the sea would call out through the rain and calm the storm in me? Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow, a wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind. Still, you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling. And you've told me who I am. I am yours. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? For I am yours. Who am I indeed that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, your name, would care to feel my hurt, your hurt? Who am I? I am God's beloved child. What a wondrous gift. The absolutely best one you'll ever get. There is a catch, though. You have to accept it. You have to pick up the box, open it, and accept it in your heart. For those of you who have already accepted this gift, take a moment to reflect on its impact in your life. Is the gift showcased prominently in your heart? And has receiving it made a difference in how you live your Monday through Saturday life? How you make decisions? How you treat other people? how you prioritize what is important to you? Or was the gift opened sometime in the past and is now sitting on a back shelf in your heart, dusty and forgotten, in the stress of making ends meet and dealing with life's daily challenges? Or have you never gotten around to opening it at all? The very best part of this gift is that it's available every day not just on Christmas. And it's available to everyone. Instead of lottery odds of 1 in 259 million, the odds here are 259 million in 259 million. So what should our response be to this best Christmas gift we'll ever get? I can think of three things. First, open the gift. Accept it today for the first time or re-accept it again. Second, thank the giver. We can't send God a thank you note, but we can thank God in prayer. And third, tell others. You know how you can't wait to call or text a friend or family member when you have good news or you've received a great gift? 
be like the shepherds outside Bethlehem. Quote, they made known what had been told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. How can you do it? Well, instead of telling your friends this year about your new iPhone or Kindle or sweater or jewelry or whatever you got, simply say, this Christmas, I remembered what it was really all about. And I renewed my faith in my Savior, Jesus Christ, who simply is the best Christmas gift I'll ever get. May it be so. Please join me in prayer. Dearest Jesus, Thank you so much for coming to earth in human form so that we could understand God's love and achieve salvation through believing in you. You truly are our best Christmas gift. Help us to share this gift with others this Christmas season. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Christ, God's love and grace, God's compassion, mercy, and forgiveness are physically and eternally proclaimed. And let us not forget that the proclamation is not just for us, but the proclamation is also through us. The message of this day is a cause to celebrate in the midst of grief. God continually, faithfully, and constantly tries to reach out to us, to communicate to us. God never ceases coming to us to bring grace and justice into our lives and into the world. God, God's patience and perseverance never fail. And in Christ, God's reign is already available among us and within us. 
And in light of all this, in light of all that you've heard today, in light of Elaine's message and the messages that Dave has sung and his songs today and the prayers, in light of all of this, we have an opportunity to reflect and recognize all the ways in which God is speaking in our world. We have an opportunity to notice and celebrate the places where God's gracious love is already visible. The challenge of Christmas for us, that challenge is to hold tight to our Christmas spirit. Hold on tight beyond just today on Christmas Day. Let us be open to God's grace and love in every moment and retain a listening and receptive heart in the midst of everything going on every day. Let us be open to God's grace and love in every moment and the way that we treat our neighbors. Let us be open to God's grace and love in every moment in the way we relate to those who think, believe, or act differently than us. Let us be open to God's grace and love in every moment in the way we involve ourselves in our communities. Even as Christ is the ultimate messenger of God, the reason we celebrate so joyously today, we are also God's messengers, reflecting God's love in our action and making it known in our words. If we can commit to this, and if Christmas is to have meaning for us, the world has changed in subtle but significant ways. Like the God we serve, let us never grow tired of proclaiming God's justice, love, and grace into this world. May it be so, my friends. Amen. As you move from our time together this morning to move into your family celebrations, I hope that's where you're going. I hope your day will be filled with joy, celebrating the birth of Jesus. I'd like to leave you with this blessing, and this is the uh, Franciscan Christmas blessing. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, hard hearts, half-truths, and superficial relationships. May God bless you so that you may live from deep within your heart where God's Spirit dwells. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people. May God bless you so that you may find work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, hunger, and war. May God bless you so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. May God bless you with truth. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world, in your neighborhood, in your community, so that you will courageously try what you don't think you can do, but with Christ, you'll have all the strength necessary. May God bless you fearlessly. Speak out about injustice, unjust laws, corrupt politicians, unjust and cruel treatment of prisoners, and senseless wars, genocides, starvations, and poverty that is so perverse. May God bless you that you remember we are called to continue God's work of love and healing in this world, in and through God's name, in God's spirit continually creating and breathing new life and grace into everything and everyone we touch. God bless you, New Market. May you go in peace.